Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to run the stable diffusion model right on your machine and even take it a step further by using it inside a real world app. Let's dive in. All right, let's get started. First, open your code editor and create a new Jupyter Notebook. You can use Google Collab, the classic Jupyter Notebook, or like me, VS Code with the built-in Jupyter support. Before we dive into the fun stuff, we need to make sure all the necessary packages are installed. So in a new cell, type the following commands. These will install everything you need, PyTorch, the diffusers library, transformers, and a few helper packages. Once that's done, we're ready to start building. Let's break down the code step-by-step. Step. First, we're importing the essential libraries. Torch is from PyTorch. It's used to handle tensors and run computations on the GPU. Stable Diffusion Pipeline comes from the Hugging Face Diffusers library. This is what gives us access to the stable diffusion model. Pill is for working with images, and Matplotlib Plotlib is great for displaying them right inside the notebook. And warnings.filterwarnings ignore is just to keep the output clean by hiding unnecessary warning messages. This part checks if a GPU is available using CUDA. If you've got one, the model will run much faster. If not, it falls back to the CPU. Still works, just a bit slower. Finally, we print out which device is being used so you know what's going on under the hood. Now, let's load our model and set everything up for generation. We're using a smaller version of Stable Diffusion called TinySD. It's much lighter and perfect for testing things locally, especially if you don't have a powerful GPU. Here, we load the model into a pipeline using From Pre-Trained. We also set the data type depending on whether we're using a GPU or CPU. Float 16 is faster and uses less memory on GPUs while Float32 works safely on CPUs. Then, we move the entire pipeline to the correct device, either your GPU or CPU, so it's ready to run. This line enables attention slicing, which helps reduce memory usage during image generation. It makes things smoother, especially on lower-end hardware. And finally, we print a little confirmation message, just to let us know everything loaded correctly. Now here's a heads up. When you run this cell, it's going to take some time. The model needs to download a bunch of files from the internet. For me, it took around 26 minutes to fully download everything the first time. So go grab a coffee or three and let it finish in peace. Now that our model is ready, let's create a function to generate images from text prompts. Here's the function we'll use. This function is called generate image and it takes four parameters. Prompt, this is your main text input. The description, of what you want the model to generate. Negative prompt, this is optional, and tells the model what to avoid. For example, blurry or low quality. Num inference steps, this controls how many steps the model takes to denoise the image. More steps usually mean better quality, but also longer generation time. And guidance scale, this value tells the model how closely it should follow your prompt. Higher values, it's more faithful to your description, but less creative. Inside the function, we call the pipeline with our parameters and images zero gets the generated image from the result. Finally, the function returns that image so we can display or save it. Pro tip, you can tweak the number of steps in guidance scale, depending on how sharp or stylized you want your images to look. Now it's time for the fun part. Let's generate our first image. We start by writing a simple prompt a lion versus a serpent. Then we pass it to our generate image function and it returns an image based on that description. To display the result, we use matplotlib. We set the figure size to make it nice and big, use imprison to show the image, turn off the axis, and set the title to our original prompt. Just like that, your AI generated artwork appears on screen. And finally, we save the image to a file called generatedimage.png so you can keep it share it, or use it in a project later.
And just to show you how powerful this model can be, I tried a new prompt, a red dragon fire breathing. I also increased the num inference steps in the generate image function to 100. And wow, the quality jumped up a lot. The details are sharper, the lighting is better. It's honestly impressive. But fair warning, my PC turned into a mini furnace and it took about seven minutes to generate this masterpiece. So be patient and maybe keep a fan nearby. Now it's your turn. Try your prompts, play around with the parameters and see what kind of stunning art you can create using AI.